connected to Galaxy Tab A2016 and iPhone. Yo, what's up? What's up, Mike? <clears throat> what is this do? Yo, that's what's up, bro. That is what's up. I sure appreciate it, man. A lot of people don't go back through my archives, man. If you miss out on a lot of good shit by not going back through them archives, man. How you doing this morning? What's good with you? What's good with you? I got fucking Instagram live. I got motherfucking YouTube PlayStation live. Damn, if I had one more camera, I'd go on Facebook live. Well, I'd be all over the damn world right now. We're up. I would be everywhere right now. Mm. All right, all eyes on me. Now, I got to figure out a way to fucking hardwire my laptop up here. I'm gonna have to run a fucking another ether cord because it's pulling I'm pulling too much shit, yo. I got the PS4 on and the laptop, the phone, and I would have to turn on the tablet. Yo, Grand Rising's Queen. Uh now if I turn on the tablet to get some music, I ain't sure if that shit's gonna fuck up my goddamn Wi-Fi or not. Had too much shit pulling on what's uh, on all the shit, yo. That's what it is, yo. Early bird, get that worm. You get up, get your shit done early. You know what I'm saying? Get your advertisement, work on that shit. I'm done. That's how I did the same thing. I got up like, like five something. Shot to the damn gym for a minute. Came home. I ain't really had a lot of shit to do. Got down. I, I down did a little bit of laundry. I washed some dishes. Straightened out the living room. You know what I'm saying? That was my day for the day. <laughs> Jay Boozy, what's up, guys? That's it. I don't know why. Uh, yo. Yo, what up, Joe? But down. Yeah, I don't know. I can't understand people who aren't morning people. You know? Get up. Get your day started. All your important shit. Put that shit on the top of your damn list. Especially if it's not a lot of shit to do, man. Go ahead and get that shit out of the damn way. Then the rest of the day... You can paint, smoke. You feel me? <laughs> All the rest of the day. Boozy, what's up? Hey, man, y'all know how I do, man. For real, for real. I don't know. How the hell y'all watch me all the time, man? This shit, I be thinking like this shit be bored as hell. But I just be chilling, but I do the same shit every day. <laughs> 
Word up. I just be chilling though. Like I said, I come in the studio, spend a couple hours in this bitch, just working on art. You know what I'm saying? That's it, man, that procrastination. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm on uh, talking to my homies on YouTube right now. Hey, I'm telling everybody, okay, good. Since since y'all live right here on Instagram, man, if y'all want to see my other stream, my, my more better stream, follow me on uh, on YouTube. I got my homies up in here. You know what I'm saying? We sitting around chilling. I'm about to get this good art session going. You know what I'm saying? Streaming live from the PS4. So I'm on several different platforms. Just by me streaming on a PlayStation. I'm I'm already on PlayStation Live, which links to YouTube. So that's two different platforms right there. And then the Instagram account. Yo, triple nine. <laughs> and then the Instagram. That's I'm on like all kind of shit right now. Boozy, that's what's up, man. What you do for a living? Sucks that we gotta have jobs, man, but you know. Alright, guys, I'm gonna attempt to turn the Wi Fi on this tablet and see if we can get some music. Man, uh, I really turned the Wi Fi off the tablet because everybody on Instagram kept saying that the stream was lagging and pausing and shit. So that's why I try to tell people if y'all if y'all do want to watch me stream and watch me live and check out my art and stuff, it's always better to do it on YouTube. Um, it's just a stronger platform. YouTube is built for that. So let me see if I can try this real quick. Oh, for real? Now the tablet doesn't want to come on. Oh, I powered that bitch all the way off. Alex, what's up? Y'all seen them pictures, man? You know what, bro? Send, send, send me a selfie, yo. I'm going to draw a picture for you. I thought, I thought about that shit long and hard, bro. But you actually, you, you, you found that you did it. And I, I, I honestly believe you would have went through and finished the last part of that fucking challenge if, um, if you could have been able to decipher the names. But, uh, and I talked about that shit earlier today, too. I honestly did. Yo, that shit was on my mind. I was, I'm live on Instagram now. And a little while ago, I brought that shit up. Like, yo, I put out a fucking tough-ass challenge for a, a giveaway. And somebody... Damn near got it, but it was it was my fucking fault. The man sent me pictures and everything. Said I, the man said I got it. I just can't see the names. I was like, uh, and then I went and looked on looked at it for myself, and I was like, yeah. Then he sent pictures. I was like, yeah, that was kind of fucked up. I should have I should have checked it first to make sure that the challenge could be completed. So I feel I feel like I owe you that one. Yeah, Mike, that's what it is. Like I say, I just try to reach out on all platforms. Uh, Travis Prince. You can just find me right on YouTube. Matter of fact, um, for my Instagram followers, if you go to my bio, my YouTube link is in the bio. Uh, I'm going to um, I'm giving, have another giveaway at 1,000 subscribers, another free portrait. Um, honestly, at 1,000 subscribers... I might give like a little a little painting away, like a, a 10 by 12 or something. I might paint you a little something when I hit that thousand mark. Uh, my Instagram is paintings by the prince. That's all my social media, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, um, DeviantArt, Tumblr. Uh, Twitter, everything is paintings by the prince. And so my challenge was, I, I wanted, I wanted to give away art. You know what I'm saying? Like have just because I get so much support from so many different people, yo, from all over the world, and it it really does amazes me. And dude, like sometimes I get messages, like really touching, deep shit, yo, like. Shit that I honestly never thought that I'd be able to do, you know, like just to motivate people in a certain way. And I got a message from a guy. He he said something that made me, you know, he he just let me know like my art touched him, and he just likes watching my stream and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I feel I want to give back to people because 
people give me so much inspiration and so much encouragement and so much motivation. So I try to figure out ways to like just give art away sometimes because my shit is expensive as fuck and everybody can't really buy my art. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, selling it is not the big it's not the big deal. I just want to produce beautiful art. You can just look at it. And if that and then like I say, just sometimes people just seeing my art and makes them feel good. You know, and that and that is that shit is a fucking honor to me. And um so I, I hit a thousand no, I hit five hundred subscribers and for the you know, I said, Okay, whoever my five hundredth subscriber is, I'll give a free portrait drawing away. And then I hit the mark and then the guy who was number five hundred, I called it for like three or four days and he never he never like came up to claim the prize and I was like all right so I still wanted you know I didn't I wasn't able to give that drawing away at number 500 so I wanted to try to figure out a different way to give a, a piece of art away and so I came up with this challenge right so I said uh, first of all I let everybody know in order to do this challenge you have to have access to my art catalog so that was a, a slip in to get you know just more people to my social media sites and anything but so <clears throat> so go to any one of my social media sites my facebook uh what is it community my facebook community page is probably the best one because that is strictly art i really really don't post anything else on my on my Facebook art page except art. Now I have a regular Facebook page where I post all kind of conspiracy theories and government issues, political issues, social issues and things like that. So but my community page is strictly art, just all my paintings and drawings. Uh my Instagram is kind of a mixture. I I post like a, a lot of food and ginger ales and sodas. It's weird as shit, but I, I put a lot of my art up there, too. But um, so I told people, if you really want to you have the, the best chance, go to my community page on Facebook, Paintings by the Prince, so you can have access to the images of my paintings. And I said, now, there's a painting that I have. In this painting, there is a list of names. A list of names now if you can find this list what I want you to do is take that list and so every every name on the list is an author right so to get the names on the list and find the book that is most popular by that author and give me that list back so I know that you see the list you know the names plus I want you to find the book that this author is most popularized for some of their best works and that's in turn you know educating my viewer because they really got to do a search like oh I see these names I don't know who these guys is shake anti Diop so now you got to look them up you know what I'm saying dr. dr. Amos Wilson now you got to look up dr. Amos Wilson you probably don't know who he was okay now just just besides looking up Amos Wilson you need to figure out what was one of his most popular books so now you know now you know a new author and you know the title of a of a highly uh publicized book by this author so we're all getting educated and you can win a prize and somebody actually found the painting found the list but he said when he blew it up to try to read the names it was too fuzzy and he couldn't make out the names and i was like fuck that's fucked up but so I still, it was Alex too. Um, so I definitely still want to give Alex that, that prize, man. Yeah, like, yeah, Mike, that's dope. I really like the concept, man. Not only do you get to participate they get to learn new material, and that's exactly what I was trying to do. Not just like here, you can have a drawing. Like that shit takes me time, you know. I said I gotta, gotta send me a picture. I gotta sit down and draw this shit, make sure that shit look like you. Then I gotta mail that shit to you, man. You, you have to do something for that, but not something crazy. Okay, well you want, well learn something real quick. All right, I'm gonna help you learn something. You can learn these authors and and learn these books real quick. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? You might go buy one and read it, maybe. You know, and some some wild crazy dream of mine you know that people actually 
read books that I suggest to them. Well, but uh, so I thought it was I thought it was a cool challenge. I'm gonna come up with something else again, and then I'm gonna definitely walk myself through the challenge completely. I may even play the challenge out on my girlfriend to make sure that it can be accomplished with somewhat, you know, ease. You know, but um. And I did, I did show this paint earlier to the people. Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up? So this is, um, let me grab both cameras. Hey, the camera's looking at each other. Hi, I'm Instagram. Hi, I'm PlayStation. How are you doing? Do, do, do. Okay, that's, that's weird, awkward. Let me stop. So this is the painting here. And you guys can see the list of names there. Right in the corner, it's, it's actually a chalkboard back there. And so the names are Dr. Amos Wilson, of course, at the top. Okay, somebody did ask what was my favorite book. I don't know, and that right there probably just said it for me, like, just because, I don't know, did I subconsciously or consciously put Dr. Amos Wilson name at the top of that list. I don't know. I don't know. Did I did I do that on purpose? Because um, Dr. Cla if I did it alphabetically, you know, Dr. Claude Anderson technically should have been at the top. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think um, Amos Wilson is probably one of my favorite writers. <sighs> yeah, I have to think about that favorite book some more. It's Wilson. Wilson got some stuff for you. He don't be holding back. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Oh, come on. Charger, just go in there. Charging. All right, guys. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Yeah, yeah, PlayStation did sound more. I don't know, just, I guess I'm partial to PlayStation. See, that's that fucking subconscious shit, yo. People gotta catch that shit. Even, it'll play tricks on your damn self. Hi, I'm Instagram. Hi, I'm PlayStation. <laughs> damn, damn, PlayStation. Sound diesel and shit, ain't it? Yeah. I'm from Japan. <laughs> you from Japan? Shit. Instagram. Instagram sound like Mickey Mouse. PlayStation. Shit. Well, I guess so, man. Like Instagram is Instagram is just the app. You know what I'm saying? PlayStation is a whole system in its own self, in its own right, man. PlayStation been around for two decades. You know what I'm saying? PlayStation is alpha. PlayStation. What's up? What's up, Instagram? Nice to meet you. What you do? Take pictures? Hmm, that's cool. I was doing that like 12, 13 years ago. Um, uh, my favorite book. I'm trying to find it. If it's even up here. I might I might claim this one as my favorite book. No lie. Uh Black on Black Violence. The Psychodynamics of Black Self-Annihilation in Service of White Domination. That's, I'm going to call that my favorite one. Yo, Disturb, what's up, bro? Oh, can I draw anything for you? Oh, hell, he about to put some stipulations in there. Man, I said a portrait drawing. What you want? What, 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 you, got in, what you got in mind? You want me to draw you some flowers? You want me to draw you, what, a teddy bear? What you want, man? Say, Prince, can you draw anything for me? Anything. Anything like what? All right, Instagrammers. Uh, I think I'm not, I'm not gonna use this tablet for music. I'm gonna use my phone for music like I normally do. I just wanted to uh, pop in here for a minute, let you guys see what's going on in the studio, just because, like I say, uh, most most of my Instagram followers 
don't get to see the inside of the studio because they don't follow me on YouTube. It's all good. I just try to share, you know, just share the beauty everywhere I can. I might start doing uh, live Instagram streams a little more often because I got to add some followers on Instagram. I got like almost 2,500 followers on Instagram, but I got less than 700 followers on uh, 700 subscribers on YouTube. It's weird. But every, I understand that everybody doesn't use the same platform, too, you know? Some people be like, yo, fuck that. Um, fuck YouTube. <laughs> YouTube's for old people. Like, my son. My son told me that Facebook is for old people. Word up, yo. I was like, yeah, you... you hey, I said... <laughs> what I say? I say, yo, you should check out this post that I put on Facebook. He's like, I don't have Facebook. I was like, I thought you did. He was like, yeah, but I deleted it. Like, Facebook's for, for old people. Everybody you just use Snapchat and Insta Instagram now. That shit kind of, like, crushed me a little bit. Like, yo, I thought Facebook was still cool, yo. Like, am I that old? Like, damn. A conspiracy drawing? Hmm. Arvid, what's up, bro? <laughs> Can you paint me a flower? All right, all right, Instagrammers. I got to go, man. My my, 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 my YouTube family up in here, man. You know what I'm saying? We do it different on this side, man. Y'all cool as shit, though. Yo, peace. Till next time. Whoa, man. Those Instagram guys are... They're kind of different. You know what I'm saying? Hi. I'm Instagram. Yeah, I bet you are Instagram. Now I get lots and lots, oh my god, like tons and tons and tons of love on Instagram, yo. People share my paintings all the fucking time and like I only I only friend people who are cool as fuck. Are you like if I don't know you at all, like some people just see my shit and be like, oh follow me too. I'm like, mm, do you have art on your page? Are you doing anything artistic, creative? Do you play music? Do you dance? Do you tap? Do you do any oh you're not doing nothing on there you just got a bunch of like selfies and sneaker pictures i'm like nah yo that's a that's a chick yo she goes to the to the same gym i go to yo that chick is diesel like like people like that, that's who I follow on Instagram. Motherfuckers be drawing. Say that shit ain't tight. Drawing a uh, picture of K dot. Yeah, I know some artistic ass people, yo. That's why I need all that shit to give me motherfucking inspiration. Look at brother polite. Yo, brother polite. Swear down, he a fucking pharaoh, yo. <laughs> Yo, he be chilling. He got two wives. Well, he got two, three wives. A Bentley. You know what I'm saying? Just off a of come up hustle. Oh, I missed that. All right, it's all good. Yeah, I try to come up with something too, man. Let me see. Let me turn some music on real quick. Is this off? Turn this off. Power off. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. All right, turn this Instagram off because I'm no longer dealing with those people. YouTube.
Yo, Puff on them beats. What happens after you die? All right, I'm about to select some random shit real quick, guys. Let's see. Oh, shit. This says... Why does the universe exist? Do you think he can explain it? <laughs> really? I like TED Talks. TED Talks are good, man. So why does the universe exist, people? Let's see what his science says. Explore. Exploring. I don't have... Oh, yeah. I, um... I stream on this... On this one art page, it's called um, Black Artists Connected, and there's like, uh, they have like 300,000 followers on there, and so every time I go live on um, Black Artists Connected, I'll get like 7,000 views or some shit. What? The only way I can do Facebook Live is like from my phone. Yeah. I don't know, it's weird. Cause then I have to, because it, it seems easier for me to stream YouTube and pull YouTube up on my laptop. But when I stream Facebook and pull Facebook up on my laptop, and that shit doesn't always work right, yo. I can't see comments sometimes and sometimes it's it's not even fucking um playing like I'll still be live but my Facebook on the on the laptop I have a still frame on it. I know it's weird. I like being able to look at the TV also. I got the big ass TV. So if I look back here, I can just fucking read you guys messages. I just keep the laptop right there to fucking Lock motherfuckers if I have to. You know? But when with the phone, I just can't look back and read messages on the phone. It's like, that shit too small. It's like, what the fuck that shit say? And that's why I get the laptop for the phone. But then I say YouTube on my laptop. Man, that should be acting stupid sometimes. Word, OBS Studio. Okay, I gotta get that. And my man puffed me on that tech shit, yo. You know what? Next time I stream, I might do a little, a little Facebook stream. I haven't been on there in a while. Hmm. See, now you got me interested in fucking. Let me go live on Facebook real quick. I gotta look up that OBS software too. I think the last time I went live on Facebook, that shit, you couldn't hear me. Let's see.
Uh, how long have I been painting for? Uh, roughly about eight years now. So, not quite a master at this shit yet, but I'm getting there. Give me like, um... Give me like another, another eight years. Give me another ten years. You know what I'm saying? Then I had a shit master. But they say really, if you, if there's just one thing you want to master, if you practice one thing two hours a day for six years, you'll have it mastered. So I think I've, I've practiced art at least two hours a day for six years. Yeah, I put a lot into it, bro. I swear, I'm in this little room a lot trying to. Trying to get these beautiful ass paintings out there, man. Yo, Facebook, can you guys hear me? For some reason, when I stream on, yo, when I stream on Facebook, man, I, I, I don't get sound a lot, so that's why I haven't really been up here like that. I can Am I getting sound right now with you guys? Yes, no, maybe so. Yep. I might not be getting no sound on Facebook. Yo, D-Dub, is there any sound coming through this thing? Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I already got like five, five or six viewers on Facebook, but I can't tell if they hear me or not. I remember the last time I streamed from there, it's something weird with that Facebook app. Like, I can stream from, <clears throat> I can stream from Instagram and use both cameras. I can use the forward camera and the the facing the the rear facing camera, and you'll get audio no matter which side of the camera I use. But for some reason, like when I use the PlayStation, I mean, uh, um. The Facebook app, if you're looking at your screen phone and that camera that faces you, like if I try to use that camera, I won't get any audio. But if I use the the other camera on the back of the phone, like then audio will pick up. It's weird it's weird as shit, so I don't know. I'm not trying to wreck my brain about that shit. And I still can't tell if I'm getting audio, nobody won't say anything. No? Yeah. No. What the hell? Are you can invite people to be a guest on your Facebook stream? Hey guys, can you can, can you hear me? Am I getting audio? Can you guys hear me? No? Uh. And the app shut off. What up, L? Okay. I guess that answers my shit about Facebook. So yeah, it's, it's weird, like, when I do that shit, man, that Facebook, I gotta have, like, all the Wi-Fi going straight to my fucking phone.
Ouch. Uh, we're right back, guys. What the? Connected to icon. Before that, we had the 8.1 earthquake. I worked with Russian scientists in the mid 1990s, and what we developed were systems for leading them offshore. And this information was given to the U.S. military because Russia really doesn't have a problem with hurricanes. We do. <laughs> Here we go again, guys, another man-made geoengineered storm. And knowing that the government, uh, the bankers, have the ability to knock these things out with their weaponry, their electromagnetic weaponry, but they're not. They're going to feed it. Our Buddha, which has already been destroyed, you know, half of the population there is homeless. But Barbuda is bracing for Hurricane Jose. They're remotely controlling it with heart. Hurricane Irma and Jose are basically man-made with this technology that I'm about to show you. Basically, these are frequency weapons, so to speak, or weather modification technology off the west coast of Africa. How actually do they form? Well, believe it or not, the hurricane is sort of like a bowling ball. They form off the coast of Africa as a small breeze, and then they gather energy as they go toward warm water across the Atlantic. And uh, while he lets everybody on the ground do the work that they are all equipped to do, you know, it, it's an obvious man-made, I mean, not, not man-made, natural, incredible disaster that Texas is dealing with. Very. And so the federal... There is geoengineering, there is weather manipulation, there is the weaponization of weather, there is everything. It's admitted, it's known, there's evidence of it, it's on the internet. The Air Force has uh, gotten great value out of Mark in the past three years. We took over from the Navy and managed it and actually did a number of uh, experiment campaigns up there and uh, have finished our, our work that we we're interested in doing up there. Now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at Sydney College. I came across the issue of geoengineering. There's substantial evidence that these programs are going on currently. Not only from the testimonies you're hearing today, but from doctors, scientists, and activists around the world. And you know what they're doing now? They have set up a checkpoint at the bottom of this bridge. This is the bridge that takes you from New Orleans over into Gretna. It's the only way out. They've set up a checkpoint, and anyone who walks up out of that city now is turned around. What does Raytheon, big oil companies, uh, Bill Gates, the CIA, and uh, the Jason Group have in common? Well, uh, all of those groups are involved in thinking about and researching geoengineering. We've uh, moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the heart was really designed to do, was to inject energy into the ionosphere and be able to actually control it. And uh, but that work is, has been completed. Lasers? Really? To change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. U.S. military, we knew that they had militarized this information in the early 2000s. They sent out three large satellites. They said they were for communications. We knew that they were laser satellites, and they have been using these to manipulate storms. The government has patents on this stuff. These are a show of force by the banking system, and there's many, many agendas of why they're doing this. You know, the agenda, this is where all the oil rigs are. It's tracing the coastline like a laser beam. We finally have the top scientist astrophysicist in the world, Michio Kaku, is telling us that yes, these hurricanes are the result of a weather uh, 
modification program. The more islands, you can totally see the same kind of frequencies coming out out of these islands. And you can see these frequencies coming out of them because they have this technology there. And then if it comes in just right, you'll get a strike. You'll go into the Gulf of Mexico, get energized by the warm water, or it could be a gutter ball and simply veer off in the direction, a wrong direction. You can look out on the horizon, look up in the air and see streaks and trails of what This is a song I wrote almost 10 years ago, yo. Ronan, what's up? In a you they wanna take your wild sovereignty, no posse commentar, they ain't got no apologies. Now everywhere I go is like a dark cloud follow me. Got me starting to think that it's hard technology. Now they playing God, trying to change the weather. While we stuck in the matrix, still chained together. Getting beat, got me starting to Hey, what your boy Trap say? About 10 years ago. I've been on this shit for so long, yo. And they do, they want to take it while I stop it, no posse commentators, they ain't got no apologies. Now everywhere I go, it's like a dark cloud follow me. Got me starting to think that it's hard technology. Now they playing God, trying to change the weather. While we stuck in the matrix, still chained together. Getting beat round, kicked down, and change the weather. Well, I've been on that hard shit so long ago, on them chemtrails, nobody ain't want to fucking listen. Now they're like, oh, he's breaking the silence. He's, tell he's telling the truth about... Bitch, I said, I said harp technology was changing the damn, the weather fucking 10 years ago. So if I knew about that shit 10 years ago, how long, like they say, man, that shit was, they, man, they been doing that shit in the late 70s. I mean, uh, late 60s, early 70s. And then I'm thinking it's going to be some, some shit and I know that I just select some shit at random, right? Everyone must know this before it's deleted. The secret of the government. I'm like, oh, some new shit. Ah, damn, somebody just posted this video. It only got like 14,000 views. I'm like, okay. About to tell us some new shit. Let's talk about heart. I thought everybody already knew about heart and all them hurricanes motherfuckers be making, yo. Yeah, like chemtrails. So all all this shit going together, man. Them fucking laser satellites they got up there. The motherfucking the chemtrails they spraying in the air. That harp technology, man. That weather manipulation shit, man. All that shit go together, man. Somebody say they got they got the the technology now with that with that holo the holographic technology and shit, man. They can they can spray some fucking chemtrails. In the sky, make the fucking clouds real thick and reflective. Use some goddamn satellite laser shit and produce some fucking holograms in the sky to make that shit look like the return of Christ or an alien invasion or whatever the fuck they want to make that shit look like. Or they can fuck around with the stratosphere and the ionosphere. With ultra low frequency radio waves and fucking uh, lightning, I mean, uh, fucking laser beams and cause fucking tsunamis, hurricanes, earthquakes, tidal waves. And then they got this movie coming out called Geostorm. Oh, somebody, somebody using the satellite to change the weather. Like, yeah, we're already doing that. But, oh, you're going to put it in the movie and make it seem like some fake ass, some fake technology that's not active right now just calm down people it's only a movie this will never happen uh okay yeah mm -mm. shit is crazy yo matter of fact we're we gonna come back to this we're gonna finish this little thing right there what they saying let I had to let y'all know that little piece of that song man been on the contrails for a minute let me look up the preview for this movie geo storm i think that's the name of it geo storm trailer Yeah. 
Senate Committee will now hear from Jacob Lawson, Climate ISS Chief Coordinator. May the record reflect that he was nearly one hour late. Yeah, sorry about that. I literally had to fly in from outer space. Thanks to a system of satellites, natural disasters have become a thing of the past. We can control our weather. Mr. President, one of our thermospheric satellites malfunctioned over Afghanistan. So your proposal is what? We shut down all satellites. I don't need to remind all of you how many people died from catastrophic climate conditions. Make sure there's no further incidents. Are you going back up to space? I'm coming back. I promise. Have a safe trip, sir. Just don't touch anything. Jake Lawson. The Jake Lawson? You look much older than I would have thought. I, I mean, you, you look good. Am I getting fired? My access has been blocked. So satellite has a bad con, that happens. Not a satellite. All of them. This wasn't a malfunction. It was intentional. There's potential for catastrophic weather events on a global scale. A geostorm. We have to shut the system down. The only one who has the kill codes is the president. I need your help. You're soliciting a secret service agent. Seriously? We're kidnapping the president in a self-driving cat. Jake, if you can't stop it... Oh yeah, tons of explosions and satire and those good punchlines. We're kidnapping the president in a self-driving taxi. <laughs> oh, look at the graphics. The buildings are falling. These motherfuckers is telling you they got satellites that manipulate the weather. And that somebody has taken over the satellites. They have weaponized the weather. And now they're using it to fuck shit up. Oh, but it's just a movie. And it never happened. No, right. Yeah, Ronan, that's and, and that's the thing too. Like I have an insider in my family of my aunt, she's she knows shit. She works in, in government and she knows shit. And I remember and she, she's ex military too. Her and her husband are ex military. Uh, I think she re, she got out of the military, she was sergeant major or something like that. But anyway, this was like years ago. This is like seven years ago. I'm on YouTube and I'm looking up like super soldiers and exoskeletons and shit like that. Power armors and shit. And uh, I come across this one good ass military video about a fucking exoskeleton. And I showed it to my aunt. I was like, yo, look at this right here and see what this kind of shit they got now. She looked, she just glanced at it real quick. She was like, oh, that's old. And just how she brushed it, I was like, woman, you seen some shit. You know some shit. She's like, ah, oh, that's old. But that that's that is. If we see it, it's old. All these oh, um I like the, the cell phone technology, you know. The iPhone 8 and it has, you know, everything in there. GPS tracking and this and that, ba da 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 da. It's complicated systems. But if you can have all that technology in the palm of your hand, imagine what the fucking military got. You know what I'm saying? Once again, they're fucking uh, several decades ahead of us when it comes to technology. All our technology comes from military uses. The military has, the government has the funding to push uh, technology in whatever area. So they give different military branches these blackout programs to see what they can come up with. And once they've utilize every aspect of certain types of technology then they'll downgrade it dumb it down and then uh give it to the public you know what i'm saying like just like cell phones that shit was old before they were public you know and then when cell phones first came out they didn't have uh global positioning satellite trackers on it you know but they were in existence and they were already heavily used by military and oh, now you got a GPS in your phone, it's in your car. But that technology was old as fuck, yo.
Oh, the Roslyn Chapel. Yeah. Yeah, they back on this. I think they're really going to start. Um, unleashing some of these. Weaponized storms and taking credit for it. We physicists are firing a trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. This is a global issue. A quote from the U.S. Air Force document reads, In 2025, U.S. aerospace forces can own the weather by capitalizing on emerging technologies. You are not allowed to go to Gretna, Louisiana from New Orleans, Louisiana. Look in the face of the beast. This is it. This is it. No sugarcoating. No political spin. No Republicans with Democrats. People suffering. Let them go. Bill Gates, for example, is investing in a number of geoengineering companies and projects. He's backing scientists doing that kind of work. Uh, the security state is taking a close interest in it. Uh, they're carrying out inquiries. And uh, the way they do this are hurricanes. We first have to dispel this myth that hurricanes are somehow crea uh, created and maintained by warm water. Totally incorrect. The hurricanes are powered by electrical currents from the ionosphere. Now, I told you when um, Harvey hit, they were gonna raise gas prices. We already have a gas increase already, about 35 cents right now, and when it was before the storm. The skies are sprayed with nanoparticles. You might as well have said, Chemtrails, because they're the same thing, delivery system for nano dust. They're spraying the skies with nanoparticles. This technology, going to zoom out a little bit, is creating these spindles, so to speak, right? You can totally see all of these and all of these. And they will say, those are contrails. Those are from jets. Where? What are you talking about? These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions. But these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. There are also doctors like David Keith, Alan Robach, and Ken Caldera, all trying to convince the American people that these climate engineering programs are a good thing to help fight global warming. When confronted, they deny these programs as good as. So they began talking about, uh, for example, a sulfate aerosol shield that would, would reflect some some sunlight back into the atmosphere and cool the planet. A very, yeah, it sounds like crazy science fiction, but in fact it's a very serious proposal getting a lot of work. The government issued a warning stating that because of the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, this hurricane season, which goes on till the end of November, could be one of the worst in memory. So watch out. There could be more monster hurricanes to come. Y'all don't know about that fucking heart. <clears throat> and go as far as you. Get up to 60,000 mile limited treadwear warranty with Firestone Destination LE2. Get up to $100 on a Firestone Visa prepaid card by mail when you buy a set of four eligible tires. Okay, okay, fucking tires. So Obama's talking about all of this was global warming and that and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. And I believe strongly in clean water and clean air. But I don't believe that what they say, I think it's a big scam for a lot of people to make a lot of money. 
Are you a pilot? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay, can I put you on camera? Do you mind? Oh, uh, just like that. Do you know anything about chemtrails? No. Okay, yeah. Just a question to you. Hello? Hi. Uh, do you speak English? Sure, what do you need? Okay, just a question. Do you know what is a chemtrail? The what? A chemtrail. I don't know what a chemtrail is. Yeah. How about the, the chemtrail generator? Oh. Ich bin Josef Raumfahrt, der Schicker, und habe Flugzeuge repariert und so weiter. Ich möchte euch jetzt mal ganz kurz erzählen, was ich gemacht habe. Skies are actually overcast, so we can't see the geoengineering or the chemtrailing that's taking place. It's going on all over the country, all over the world, and people everywhere. There is an epidemic of people simply coughing. How many people do you know? <laughs> Look at this. I mean, what the f is wrong with everyone? Can't you f see this? Can't anyone see this sh in the sky? There's a lot of West oh, Chinese planes flying on the top of the place I'm visiting here. Y'all ever seen chemtrails? You know what chemtrail is? Y'all see chemtrails in the sky? No? <clears throat> you seen what video? Fucking chemtrails, man. Brought that out way too much. <clears throat> Have to push that back some. <clears throat> Calgary, these are the people who are behind the chemtrails here. Turn, turn around. Come on, watch. You mentioned earlier that you're a pilot. Oh, yeah, talk about uh, chemtrails. We hear a lot about that. What are those, and is, are they for real? Well, when you look into that and ask questions, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, contrails. No, no, contrails. Uh, oh, that's cool. My neighbor, you get it, so I got it. Trump, I'm doing a video. Trump, I'm doing a Condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale, you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two mile walk, of you know what they are. I've heard of them, I don't know if they are. Okay. I've heard of them, okay. You don't know what it is. Come on, Emily. Okay. Good night, thank you. Uh, and is it true? Uh, well, there's a big debate. Yeah. Are you feeling? If you take a two mile walk on a cold day and you can turn around and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. <laughs> In Zusammenarbeit mit dem Deutschen Luft- und Raumfahrtzentrum, ein Flugzeug mit einer Spuleinrichtung ausgestattet. Ja, ja, ja. 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 Ja, ja
don't get it. I just don't get it. It's summertime. That's right. We don't see f***ing blue skies anymore. People walking down the street, looking at their f***ing phones, looking at anything else but the sky. This is the wine spit test where you rinse your mouth out and then you take grape juice and you hold it in your mouth and you spit it out into a Petri dish. Well, watch the stuff is alive. Watch what happens. I have a video on my channel that shows a rainbow around the sun with chemtrails next to it. That's crazy. But then that's what I'm like I'm saying, man. So what what is in the smoke itself? What is the smoke made of? Those chemtrail clouds. And someone says that a bulk part of it is um, aluminum, like aluminum particles and uh, aluminum oxide or some shit like that. But <clears throat> it's it has a reflective, like the aluminum particles have like more of a reflective effect to it, which bends light. I say, man, they can, they can cause all kind of shit to happen. A fucking rainbow around the sun. Bending light. That shit just bend light all the way in a fucking circle, right? And then, and so, once again, this is, this is when I like to bring up white supremacy. And this is my definition, like on a grand scale, to implement programs like Kim Kim Trails. Like who has the fucking power to do such a thing? You know what I'm saying? And to subject everyone else to their fucking will. That is some fucking crazy ass shit. That's the supremacy shit that I talk about. That's, that's supremacy. To make decisions for everybody on what the fuck you're going to breathe in your air. <laughs> you were listening to that Monsanto's uh, lecture earlier. Like they just manipulate all our fucking food and don't have to tell us. That's some supremacy shit, yo. But when you go to the very top of Monsanto's, who running that shit? You got to look at these people, yo. <laughs> the guns of what harm is. It is an experiment in the process. It is endless. I say endless. What the heart can do. So we are your contrails. No, no. Contrails are behind a jet. If you see a jet flying very high, the stripe, the condensed stripe behind it. But you see a jet airplane going, it's not only one, they have four condensed stripes behind them. Uh, as you can see, I was a uh, airline pilot. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. So you see the contrails that don't dissipate? Uh, what's that? I see those. You don't see the long, blurry ones, that is? I see those. Did you make the sound waiver that you're not allowed to talk about what goes on in the sky? <laughs> what? Yeah, because I saw a lot of videos on the internet, and it really looks uh, believable. Yeah, Black Wall Street. It did that part. What about uh, in 19... What, 1984, when they, when they bombed... Philadelphia. They bombed the neighborhood in in Philadelphia trying to get the move movement out of there. You know what I'm saying? What about when they, they ran up in the house and assassinated Fred Hampton in his sleep? You know what I'm saying? Who 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 gives these orders? That's the supremacy part. That part. It's not Joe Blow next door cause he don't he don't want his daughter to date some nigger cause niggers are lazy and this and that. Man, you motherfucker, you work at the same place I work at. You in the same goddamn boat I'm in, bitch. <laughs> you know what I said? You not nobody. You not no bloodline. You not no fucking bank owner. You not no corporation owner. 
You ain't shit to, to them the same way I'm not shit to them. White supremacy bad for everybody, even white people. Because you're not a part of this shit. But when you look at these major, major conspiracies like this, who the fuck is carrying this out? Tyrone and Pepe? No. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not. It's, this is some motherfucking... Some motherfucker Rothschild Rockefeller shit. You know what I'm saying? Some goddamn um, Carnegie, goddamn um, Farben. What's the other motherfucker that bank shit? That goddamn uh, Chase Morgan. Those mother, those last names. Them the motherfuckers pulling some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Going to the to the to the private set, the Halliburton and motherfucking uh everybody down there in Langley. <sighs> I digress. Sometimes man it's just it's too much. It's overwhelming sometimes. And you just gotta laugh at the shit. And I laugh at the shit because other people can't see the shit. It's like so you guys don't you guys don't see the structure, right? You don't see the system at play, right? That, no, no, no. What are you talking about? Everybody has equal opportunities. All you gotta do is pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Get the fuck out of here. These motherfuckers is poisoning the planet. <laughs> and y'all wanna worry about some motherfucking gang violence in Detroit. <laughs> See, and this is the problem. <laughs> this is a problem with all these gangs and drugs. Uh, who the fuck came up with the... Who, all right, first of all, what scientists came up with the chemical concoction for chemtrails? That's some smart white dude who probably graduated with a, a master's in chemistry from Harvard. Not Tyrone and Jose come up with some, some you know, some chemical ingredients for chemtrails. So now, once the... Once the once the max the master concoction is made, who engineered and designed the delivery system for this? Tyrone and Pepe? You know, Lil Boo Boo and Tay Tay, they did all that shit. Okay. So now once you got the 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 fucking the the, the dispersal system design who 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 builds these shits and and, and uh, installs them on airplanes who gets the okay from whatever airlines to fly these planes around who trains these pilots to push that button at a certain time until that tank run out of fucking whatever kind of fluids they got in that shit once again you think you think that's Tyrone and, and Buki doing all that shit these are a bunch of really, really highly smart, educated college grad, many degree having crazy motherfuckers. And they're doing it because, you know, because science. <laughs> Think about that shit. Smart people, very, very, very smart people are engineering all these programs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But they make us. That's why. That's why I probably did choose this as my favorite book, yo. <clears throat> black on black violence, the psychodynamics of black self annihilation in service of white domination, and that's how they do it. They make everyone else a savage, put you in a savage situation, give you savage means of life, and then when you act savagely, they say, "Look, look how they're acting." We're the good people. We're the civilizers because we are smart enough to injure the atom bomb, harp technology, chemtrails, laser guided missiles. Uh, we have <laughs> we have a patent on on uh what's that shit? Uh, e the Ebola virus, E. coli, anthrax. <laughs> Uh, don't forget, we made AIDS, and we have the cure. So, that's why we're the elite, and we're superior. And you're black-on-black black violence. 
ruins the whole show. <laughs> Cause you're evil. Look at you. Look how evil you are. Why don't you guys engineer a deadly virus like like we have and show everyone that you're smart? You know. <laughs> I digress. Oh man, I'm not racist. I'm not racist at all. I just see the problem. I just see it. It's it's obvious. It's there. It's it's absolutely there. And it's like any bad thing that you hear about, you trace it to the top, and it's like white supremacy. <laughs> well, it's arguable both ways, I think. Yeah. It depends on uh, which side you're on, but yeah. Pour some in, just a little. Watch. Look. Look what it does. Now you feel that close. I am. There's a huge amount of uh, aluminum being found. Uh, I'm excited you're on, but... Yeah. I don't know what the fuck that is. Just a little. Watch. Look. Uh, look what it does. Now you feel that close. I am. There's a huge amount of uh, aluminum being found because these sprays have aluminum, strontium, barium, manganese, and uh, there's a lot of argument that aluminum is very common to be found, but aluminum is only common in a bonded form. It's not common in a free form. Telling them that we have to lay a pattern up there, but it's very common to be There's a huge- That's what I'm saying, yo. With that blood? Cookie Monster say hello. Yeah, that, that bit blood was like moving in the water. But once again, it's like something's in her blood. And, and like he said, that aluminum, that's one of the major components that we're breathing in. Yo, that shit is not aluminum's not in nature. Like like he said, it's not in like in a free form like that in nature. Just not. And it's not good in our body and it's fucking toxifying our systems. <sighs> Oh my God, what was the name of that movie? Oh my God, I can't think of the name. There was, um, yo, Raymond. There was, uh, this one anime called... Damn, I can't remember the name of this fucking anime, but anyway, in the anime, the government was putting, like, some shit in a vaccination that actually turned, converted human flesh into, like, some kind of bio, like, like, I don't know, some kind of synthetic bio material or some shit man it was weird like they were literally changing the structure of the human body but it was like a, a mandatory forced vaccination because of some epidemic that came out and oh everybody has to get the shot and then and then there was something it was a two component thing and then like somehow these people just turned into like some fucking machines or drones or some shit and that the same thing they're saying with the aluminum you know what i'm saying that the aluminum makes you fucking them chemtrails make you passive and docile you know what i'm saying they don't want a uh highly functioning active alert population they just want little mindless ass fucking drones just go to college uh, you, know, you gotta go to work uh, don't fight the system yeah Yeah, people just accept, man. Huge amount of uh, aluminum being found because these sprays have aluminum, strontium, barium, manganese. And uh, there's a lot of argument that aluminum is very common to be found. But aluminum is only common in a bonded form. It's not common in a free form. Telling them that we have to lay a pattern up there to prevent sun energy from hitting Earth. And what they're doing in there is now pretty much determined they're putting the aluminum 
barium, and strontium. Was gestattet? Wow, warfare. Biological warfare, my friends. This is the stuff they're spraying. Parasites. These people are out to murder everyone on Earth. These people are sold their soul to the devil. They have only scratched the surface of what's harmless people. What are they using it for? All from the force station. All it's worth is a now you take these chemicals and run them through a PubMed literature search in respect to human health, you will find more than 3,000 papers. Aluminum alone, I mean aluminum Alzheimer's, right, mental, I mean, it, there's no question about it. <laughs> Suddenly the stuff that they're laying out there comes down in rain. If it falls on crops, it kills the crops. It's like they have big blisters on on uh, on any one of the crops, vegetables or things like that. Organic crops totally destroyed. Can't even use them. <laughs> I never thought in my lifetime that I would see the complete and total breakdown of society, of morality, of morals, of uh, civility. On their website, they are calling for an open civil war that they will start here in the United States in November. They are fundraising for weapons, training, ammunition, supplies. They're not hiding this. They're openly fundraising so that they could get the stuff together to attack, and, and this is verbatim what they're going to do. They will start off by attacking police officers, first responders, anybody that's in uniform, and after they have disrupted that enough in the nation, and us first responders are literally going everywhere trying to resolve things, they will then go after the citizens and the people and the government to who are they? Who are this this man reveals all their plans for November for what really is going on. Who are they and what are their plans? And, and all of that. Fuck am I about to watch right here, guys? Holy shit, this guy says on November the 4th, there's gonna be a fucking a war in America. You're stockpiling guns. America's heading for a. Wait, I know he's, he's talking about they're getting stockpiles of weapons and shit. I know it's not the black community. They done made half of us fucking felons. And the other half of us are still locked up, so we can't even, you know, they already fucked us up so bad. They have, they have no, uh, no worries about us. So obviously my next thought is the Muslims, all oh, the crazy terrorist Muslims are going to come kill us on November the 4th. Oh, everybody run from the jihadist. Collapse, not just economically but also socially. Consider the fact that our nation is socially divided at this point. We have many different groups. At this point, when, when was America not socially divided? Somebody tell me when. When was America never socially divided? It was built on social division. It has maintained its social division. Okay, yeah, the Europeans don't hate the fucking Irish and the Jews as much, and they're all considered white now. 
but you know before it ends you know even even with um non-melanated people they were, they were beefing but they said oh okay look man we're going to come up with this shit called jim crow we only gonna hate on the darkies if you look like us i don't care if you you know you're swedish irish or whatever man look we're all white people now so there's still a division so where when was it when was this country never like that i don't i don't understand when people when these conservatives try to say this shit like when Even rioting at various events, we have a cultural chaos going on in this country. for saying things, saying things that will happen in America. And then this guy starts talking about lawlessness and the breakdown and all this other shit. And now they're showing this clip right here, like some riot, right? But this is clearly in Europe. You can look at their fucking police cars and, and tell that's not even in, that's not even in America. So are you, are you guys afraid of something in November that's going to happen uh, globally or just here in America? Because if it's hit just here in America and you're talking about lawlessness and riots and all that shit, then why don't you only show footage from America and not showing some shit from, from France or uh, Belgium somewhere and trying to make people think like this is in America? <laughs> This article was a reprint. Uh, actually, I have the original copy if you would like it. Uh, I can get it to Prophecy Club and, and you could uh, request that. They'll, you know, get it to you. Uh, this was in the uh, 1991 uh, Santa Barbara, California news press paper. This has to do with a single high altitude nuclear blast by a rogue nation. I couldn't believe my eyes in what I saw. I saw this massive military movement coming out of this area up in here. It came down between, in the Atlantic, down between the United States and Europe. It was marine and air, as you can see, the, the airplanes. This was my first confirmation, in a sense, from, a, uh, from General Walker. General Walker has given me many confirmations. This was my first picture of actually that they had drawn this assault taking place. It shows also the movement coming out of Europe uh, across to take these countries. And NATO command center is right in here. I watch the hand of God because God said, I will not let utter annihilation take place in this nation. In the latter day. All right, that's a bullshit one. I can't even listen to the rest of that shit. What the fuck are they talking about, bitch? You're making no sense, people. None at all whatsoever. Sorry, but I don't listen to bullshit. I can't stand that bullshit. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> A TED Talk entitled, 
This is your brain on God. <laughs> PlayStation, you're not gonna turn off. Oh, you know it's good. Let me see if uh. Let me see if they have something on this. Let's see. You're thinking about it. You don't have to think, man. Just do what you don't, man. Mind over matter. Mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. I do it all the time. I go 14 months without smoking cigarettes. You know, I go 10 Star months Trek without smoking cigarettes. Star Trek notoriously plays with, with hypothetical ideas in physics, yeah. especially when it comes to traversing. Mr. L, <clears throat> I'm in an interracial relationship too. My girlfriend is white. We don't have children together though. Um, I already have a son. And yeah, so being interracial is difficult or can be difficult if you don't have, you know, the proper parenting um and so i have i have several interracial cousins uh and two of them i, I chill with them all the time you know I, i'm in pennsylvania and i have some family in virginia and it's like like a little five hour drive and i go see my family all the time you know i i live with them for a couple years and you know and they got my aunt is my mom's sister, and her husband is white. They've been married for like 27 years. They're, both of their kids are in college now, but I can kind of see how they act. They act more white than not. But they're privileged kids. You know, they live in a fucking $800,000 home, and they have maids come clean their house for them and shit. And, so they live a, a totally different type of lifestyle but if you were to just interact with them it, it it's weird that you know the personality traits of black and white people are what the stereotypical traits of an individual should be but you would say oh they're they're you know they act more european than uh african and that's the only thing I see is that is that trying to balance out because this world is set up. Well, America is set up for the white man. You know what I'm saying? And it's easier to be white. It's just it just is. If you're white, it's easier. It just is. And so I feel like some mixed kids will prefer to be categorized and accept it as Caucasian because it will make their lives easier. 
you know. Like my like once again, one of my cousins is mixed and he was dating this white girl and her parents didn't have any problem with it at all and dated for several months and one day he was at his girlfriend's house and her grandmother came over and that was the first time her grandmother met her boyfriend and he's and she said, Oh, he doesn't he doesn't look, you know, white. Is he what is he? Is he mixed or something? And well, I don't, I don't like that. I don't think you should date him. And why is he even in the house? And you know, and people have to, just as soon as they figure out you're not even just a hundred percent, you know. So, yeah, and a lot of other countries have different, you know, societal viewpoints, but. You know, every country did not build its economic infrastructure on the backs of slavery either. So that kind of lessens the tension between the races a little bit because your people never enslaved my people and my people never enslaved your people. So, hey, you're a man and I'm a man. But, you know, when you know the history of America and why uh, the African-American community in America only owns about one percent of the land and wealth of america even though we've been here for you know five centuries and we helped build this nation and uh so many other things that we've uh contributed to this nation and somehow we're still at the fucking bottom and it's meant to be set up that way and it's meant to be kept that way you know because because for a long time we were considered, you know, three fifths of a man. Literally, on paper, you're only three fifths of a human. You're not, you're kind of, you're more of a beast. You're like a cow. You're like a really smart bipedal cow with ambidextrous thumbs. So, there. It's always how you act as a person. But once again, your society develops your personality. If you were born in a fucking Amazon jungle to one of a lost tribe, your environment would affect your personality. So you would have to think a different way to survive. So yeah, it's all about how a person acts, but your environment has dramatic influence of how you act and how you react and how you think and how you perceive. There's levels to this shit, yo. galactic distances warp drive wormhole can can you tell us about what star trek gets right and wrong yeah what's amazing about about those things and when i when i wrote the book what surprised me is those are among the most sort of fantastical things in star trek the kind of things that seem the farthest out and what is amazing is that they're not impossible at least we can't say that they're impossible i mean the the motivation is clear traveling at the speed of light doesn't get you very far the distance between here and the center of the galaxy is maybe 30,000 light years. So even traveling at the speed of light, it takes you 30,000 years to get to the center of the galaxy. That does not make for an exciting episode. <laughs> and so, uh, so they had to figure some way to go faster than light. But the problem is that you all learn in school in kindergarten that uh, you can't travel faster than the speed of light. That's what Einstein says, right? But you have to be like a lawyer and parse a little more carefully. You can't travel through space faster than the speed of light but space can do whatever the heck it wants. And so in fact, had Einstein been around, he would have thought of something that he would have called warp drive. And, and, and warp drive, of course, is a way to go faster than, than, than light. And the writers, of course, if you read how, they, how it's supposed to happen, of course, it's, it's nonsense. But in fact, in principle, you might be able to do it. In fact, given the laws of general relativity, 
you in principle could because what general relativity tells us is that space is dynamical it can expand it can contract in it the can presence warp, of it, in it can warp and in fact of course i brought up a, a few warp drives here as you can see we actually <laughs> experimented beforehand with several balloons but but happily that the world science festival was able to provide an, another thing which works better um and um so uh safe science so, yeah safe science in fact always perform safe science at on stage but this is kind of, you won't be able to see all the details, this is kind of an impressionistic uh, uh, example, but it actually is exactly what warp drive would be if you could make a warp drive. So what I've done here is, a, you can sort of see the sun and the moon and Saturn, just to give you the local environment, and this is a beautiful rendition of the USS Enterprise, you, were, you know, you would recognize that. And, uh, and so I've taped it to this balloon, and here's a star system here, and here's another star system here, and I want to show you how the Enterprise can move away from this star system and towards this star system without ever moving with respect to its local surroundings. And you do that simply by expanding space behind the spacecraft and contracting in front. So I'm just going to stand gonna behind pop? you. I may. That's why what? I stand behind you. Why are you, you. doing it near no, me? No, no. There we go. There we go. If I'd used the balloon, it would have popped. But what you can see is I squished the balloon behind it. And, I, I, and, and these stars get dragged away, but the Enterprise, of course, never moves with respect to its local surroundings. So this, this is possible in principle in the real universe. We, the question is, is it possible in practice? And the answer is we don't know. It's, a, it's an open question. Because in order to make space expand, you have to fill it up with a very special kind of energy, something called negative energy which sounds like something that was invented by a physicist in a room without windows for too long, which is true, in fact. But uh, uh, it actually exists. Due to the laws of quantum mechanics, negative energy configurations can exist for very short times. And, but what we don't know, and really this is the open question, is could you make enough negative energy to actually do anything like this? And we just don't know the answer. People like me actually get paid to worry about that. And the, but the answer is, if you could make negative energy configurations in principle, you could make a warp drive. But it turns out that warp drive is more than just a science fiction fantasy. And here's why. This short equation may turn out to be a most extraordinary discovery. It might be our passport to the universe. And this is the sci-fi fan who came up with the idea when he was a college student. I was watching Star Trek one evening and, and I was uh, on my PhD. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and in Star Trek they always talk about warping space and relativity and I thought maybe there should be a way in which we can do this consistently within relativity and not just talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the office and then I spent all Saturday in the office doing calculations and I did come up with a, with a model with an idea in which you can do a warping of space then that allows you to travel faster than light without violating any of the principles of relativity. Alcubierre's college professor was so impressed, he advised him to publish it. I've never published a paper before in my life, and so actually had to help me to write the paper and to <laughs> and all through the process of how you actually submit it to, to a journal, and it was published. Alcubierre's equation shows it's possible to warp space and time and leap across the universe in moments. Here at the Multiverse Exhibition in Washington, D.C., this travelator helps us understand how warping space-time can get us across the universe without accelerating. The empty space behind your starship expands rapidly, pushing you in the forward direction. In the same way for this walkway, new space constantly emerges, which moves you along in that direction. At the other end of the travelator, we get a sense of what's happening in front of my starship. Space is compressed. In the same way in this walkway, space is being compressed, which moves you along. So you have the illusion that you're moving. Actually, it's space which is pushing and pulling you along. To turn Alcubierre's equation into reality, I would need huge amounts of energy that would create a kind of bubble capable of warping space-time. At the front of the bubble, the space-time between me and my destination is compressed, pulling us together. At the same time, space-time behind the bubble is expanded, pushing me forwards. And all this happens in an instant, many times faster than the speed of light.
Miguel's warp drive is an ingenious way around Einstein's cosmic speed limit. But it's still theoretical and lacks one crucial ingredient, an exotic substance called negative energy, something that many scientists aren't even sure exists. But one man does believe in negative energy. He even claims he's created it in his lab. The warp drive. It sounds like science fiction. But the idea of surfing across the universe in a warping bubble of space would make perfect <laughs> sense to Einstein. Nah, nobody talked about it. There is one snake. Well, yeah, yes and no. Because I went. Only function I mean, I took art classes in, in, in uh, junior high day. and high school. But I dropped out of I dropped out of Most high school. Scientists believe negative and, uh, energy is just an unproven theoretical. And I started concept. painting like out out of high school by myself. But uh, so I but, but I did Harvey, have an atomic physicist at Yale University has made it his mission to track down. I did this have um form of energy. A really, 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 a really good art teacher in school, yo. And it's weird, like, so when I got to middle school, okay, because, you know, elementary art, elementary art is just like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I got to middle school, man, seventh grade. Man, I had I had a new art teacher. She was, that was her first year teaching. She was fresh out of college, really young. She was like, like 24 or 25 or something, yo. 24, 25 years old, fresh out of college, first year teaching, middle school kids, you know what I'm saying? So we're like, we're like 13 years old and shit. And she was just energetic, full of life, really wanted to, you know, inspire us and teach us, man. And she, she did, she did a really good job. And I, I love my art teacher, yo. She, she made school for me, yo, I swear for, so my middle school was seventh and eighth grade and then, you know, high school was ninth through 10th, 12th grade. I know a lot of different states or areas do it different. Like some middle schools are like five, like fifth grade through eighth grade or some shit like that. It's weird as shit. But anyway, I was in middle school for seventh and eighth grade. And then instead of going to the local high school, I got an opportunity to go to a private high school that was the next town over. So I got accepted to the high school and everything. It was a brand new high school that uh, my ninth grade year was the first year this school was opening up. It was already a functioning high school many years ago, like a couple generations ago. And uh, they shut down that school because that town built a new and bigger high school. So their old high school, they shut it down and they never reopened the facility for anything. They just had like an old high school sitting in town. and. Um, and so the state bought the facility and reopened it as a magnet school. And it was the smartest kids from all the local counties came together at this one school. And uh, so the year that school opened up, it was my ninth grade year. It was the first year the school was open. You know, all this state funding and government funding, and it was supposed to be the best of the best and the brightest of the brightest and all that shit. And I actually got accepted to that high school, yo, which was fucking awesome. So I went there my ninth grade year and uh, went to art class and my middle school art teacher was there. And I was like, what the fuck? She was like, I'm the teacher. I was like, yes. So me trying to get into this fucking new school and that shit worked out for me. And my art teacher applied for the fucking teaching position there and she got that shit. I was like, holy shit. It was the, I don't know, to this day, that's probably one of the best, best moments of my life. Like walking into art class in ninth grade and seeing my fucking my middle school art teacher there was like, yes, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> that shit was so fucking sweet, yo. But like I say, she taught me a lot of shit, taught me how to work with every kind of medium. Pastels, charcoal, watercolors, play, motherfucking photography, digital art, uh, graphic design, oils. I mean, she taught me everything. There was no kind of medium that I haven't used, you know, fuck with my art teacher, yo. Like I've used every medium and, but I dropped out of high school, didn't really do shit for a long time. 
And then one day I just started painting by myself. And so I still had, you know, the stuff that she taught me as a, as a kid. But, uh, so that's when I say yeah and no. I'm kind of self-taught, but not really, because I did have a really good art teacher as a youngin. And then when I started painting in my adult life, it was it was complicated, but I figured a lot of things out and I just stuck with it. And I painted for like three or four years and then I moved to Virginia and tried to get some stuff in a gallery when I was in Virginia. And I ran into this other artist and he was awesome and he teach classes. He said, oh, you should let me come. You should come to some of my classes. And I was like, all right. And so uh, I started taking his classes and he just showed me like a different way of painting. You know what I'm saying? Cause he saw, he already saw some of my stuff. He was like, oh, I can't, I can't show you how to paint. You obviously know how to paint, but I can show you like different techniques and a different style of painting. I was like, oh, good. And so I, I studied under him for about two years. And now I've been painting on my own for a while. I used to do tattoos when I was a teenager, bro. Like I'm from South Carolina. South Carolina is a very slow, backwards ass state. When I was in high school, tattooing was illegal in South Carolina. There, there were no tattoo parlors. It, you couldn't own a, a business. You couldn't get a license to do tattooing in the state of South Carolina, statewide. So if you wanted a tattoo, you better go, you better drive up the fucking North Carolina to a parlor or drive over to fucking Georgia to a tattoo parlor or you find somebody in their fucking garage or their basement somewhere to give you a fucking tattoo. And most of them shits was homemade guns. Like, I'm, you know, I'm an 80s baby. We ain't had the internet where you can just go to fucking Amazon and order a cheap ass tattoo gun. Like, motherfuckers ain't nowhere to get them shits from if you ain't had a fucking tattoo catalog or some shit. You know what I'm saying? And then most, I say most motherfuckers who, who did fucking, you know, tattoos, they ain't had like proper equipment for that shit. So it was weird. So somebody showed me how to do a simple ass tattoo, jailhouse style tattoos. Uh, you get um, some Higgins uh, felt. You get some Higgins uh, ink. It's for felt tip pens or refillable pens. Those really, really nice, expensive, like lawyer pens. Um, and you get some of that ink because it's, it's it doesn't have lead in it. It's um it's just to it's totally pigment and water I think no lead additives on it and so that's why I use that so you get you some Higgins uh, some black ink you get you a little bottle cap you get you a safety pin and a fucking some thread so you take your thread and you wrap it around the tip of the safety pin just so enough of the fucking point of that pin is sticking out. You don't want to wrap the thread all the way around the point. You just wrap it so you have a, a, a needle point sticking out and the thread is wrapped right around that shit. So when you, so, so then you take the fucking, the pin with the thread wrapped around it and you dip that shit in the ink and the thread soaks up the ink and then you just poke the fucking skin. And then when the tip of the pin pokes the skin, the ink, is uh, injected in there. And so you just poke a fucking thousand fucking times until you get in line. And so somebody, I saw somebody do that shit one time. Like I, I was like, like 15 or 16. And motherfuckers was hanging out in the park one day, just hanging out in the park. And old girl, rest in peace, uh, Bay Roof Caraway, yo. She showed me how to do that shit. She pulled that shit out of her little pack and shit. She had the ink and everything. And she took the fuck. She had some alcohol. Goddamn sterilized. It. She set that shit on fire. I think she burnt the pen tip. Then sterilized it with some alcohol. Wrapped that thread around that shit. Got the little ink out. And she gave dude a fucking, uh, some kind of group he was in or something. Some letters. It was like three letters or some shit. Yeah, but that's the only way I used to do that shit, yo. <laughs> like, this is the first one I've ever did, yo. <laughs> I was 16. I was like, fuck that. I'm going to try this shit on myself. And I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> so that shit, I was like, motherfuckers like, what the fuck is that? Is it a lion? I'm like, it's a dragon, man. 
Yo, chat, that shit don't look like no dragon. I'm like, it's a dragon. It's a fucking dragon, okay? And and then I did that. I had those done over though, but I did I did the original tattoos myself. And all this shit. This is the only tattoo that I didn't put on myself. So I went to a, a parlor and when I was living in Philly and got that shit done. With all my other tats, I put that shit on me. Like, how you do it upside down? You just draw it upside down, bitch. What the fuck is so hard? You just said it. Do it upside down. What's so hard about that? Then I got the the HNIC head nigga in charge. Everybody know what that means. Put the HNIC on there. I got this shit comes from an anime that I used to watch. Y'all check out this anime called Shadow Skills. And so that's what that shit says. Shadow Skills. And then I did the dragon. But everybody used to come to me for tattoos. I did like hundreds of tattoos when I was a teenager. And then like, I was like 18 or, or 19 and all of a sudden tattoos are legal now. South Carolina passed the law, you know, you can get you know, tattoo license and start businesses and shit. And so nobody didn't need underground tats no more. Nobody ain't had to go get some fucking jailhouse tat from some from somebody's drunk uncle with a tattoo gun made out of a, a remote control car engine. <laughs> you just dropped eighty dollars on your son, what? What you did? I'm gonna grab a drink real quick, guys. I'm getting hungry, man. Might have to ask him what time is it. Oh, shit! I, I made that sound way more dramatic than it was. All right, it's not even noon time yet. I'm gonna ask my homie if we gonna go grab a, a beer and some hot wings or something. Yeah, yeah, you can tell, you can, you can tell motherfucker with those tags. You just see his tags, you're like, oh, I think that guy's been to jail. <laughs> how, how can you tell? Look at his tattoos. The lines are kind of crooked and it's faded real bad. That's a jailhouse tattoo. Oh, you are right. That, pro that guy probably did go to jail. You better not fuck with him. He looks pretty scary, too. You know. They said his name was Bubba. Oh, shit. Not Bubba. <clears throat> Gotta text my homie this morning about the gym. But I, I'll be leaving out early, man. Motherfuckers don't be getting up early like me, y'all. Yo, I'm on the way to the gym. What's up, you coming? Text me back two hours later. You still at the gym? I'm like, dude, I'm, I just left. I'm just leaving the gym. Swear to God, I was just pulling out the damn parking lot. I'm like, dude, I'm I'm leaving now. Let's see if you wanna if you wanna hang out later on. I said, grab some lunch or something. It's 
So what were we listening to? Oh, Warp Drive, this is interesting. Around us, in the fabric of space itself. We normally think of the vacuum of space as being a Yeah, they be turning like greenish, bluish and shit. <laughs> There's energy density. That shit look all big. And we call that the zero point energy of, of space. The theory of quantum mechanics. I keep thinking about getting some more tests, but nah, I doubt it. Shimmering with microscopic pulses of energy as part of I was thinking like getting the sleeve to cover this up, or maybe not even the sleeve, but like that shoulder thing that just comes down a little bit. Steve realized I was like, nah, the way about to do that, this yeah. was to change the shape of space. There's a nice analogy. If you have two ships on a rough ocean, one ship will tend to reflect waves from it. The other one does the same thing. So the wave density between the two ships is a little bit less compared to one by itself, which is surrounded by a rough sea. So you put two ships on a rough sea, they'll be mutually attracted and they'll come together. Steve reasoned that if he created a narrow enough region of empty space, like the area between the two ships, then some of the shimmering zero point energy would not fit inside it. They got a Tesla documentary on Netflix? Oh, bro, I definitely will. Would be stronger and I definitely will. That force That's what one of the main things I watch on Netflix is that is that y'all may y'all hear what I listen to. I listen to beats and lectures and documents. That's it, yo. If you're like, oh, you watch this show, you watch sports. No, 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 no. There's a couple shows I watch on Netflix. I try to find, I try to find shit to watch, and then I watch some shit for a little while and be like, this is corny, and I'm not learning anything. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck that shit. I mean, if it can be like really, 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 really entertaining, like The Walking Dead, that's the only shit I watch. Yo. That shit gets me, yo. God damn, man. that show got me. But every other show I try to watch is like, nah, I'd rather listen to something educational. Just listen, man. Just tell me some facts. Let me know how fucked up this system is. <laughs> so I can let everybody know, let everybody else know how fucked up the system is. But yeah, a Nikola Tesla documentary on Netflix. I'll turn that shit on. I'll watch that. I was on Netflix the other day looking, trying to find something to watch. And wound up watching some some TV show called Big Mouth. It's a cartoon show. Oh my God, it's all about this. It's all about masturbation, yo. A cartoon about masturbation. It's not for kids, though, you know. But it's still, it's like, whoa. That shit is fucking crazy. And this dude, he has the masturbation monster. Whoa. I was like, really? So I did watch a couple episodes of that. Then they, I got tired of that shit. And it was like, uh, eh, there's nothing else to watch. So I'll just... Let me go paint and watch something on... Is warp technology possible? And they saying it is possible. If you bend space in front and... Can, now, if you can track space in front and expand space behind you, but you would need to fill the empty space with negative energy. And what is negative energy? Quantum physicists don't know. They don't know yet. But maybe soon. When they reverse engineer enough spaceships, I meant uh, UFOs, I meant, um, never mind. How did you get here? And that trips me out a lot too. Like, UFOs, supposedly these extraterrestrials were able to, to traverse space time from whatever star system they originate from make it all the way to our star system to our planet and crash like really but you come from all you made it all the way from over there and you get here and you you wreck you have an accident whoa sucks to be you bro mm -hmm. you came from where Andromeda B did, and to do what? Make some crop circles? 
Ah, uh, you guys are funny. <laughs> Woo. That's like me going all the way over to Japan. And I get there, as soon as I get out the taxi, I break my foot. <laughs> really? You come all the way over just to break your foot, huh? Shit. Man, I watch Zeitgeist. I watch Zeitgeist Addendum. I watch all that shit like years ago when it was new. <laughs> Not saying anything, but yeah, that shit is old, man. That Zeitgeist documentary is old. You should watch, uh, if you like that Zeitgeist, there's another one called Chimatica. And then there's another one called Exoteric Agenda. They're kind of on the same lines as that Zeitgeist documentary. But, um... Oh, that's how you roll your cigarettes? It's all I smoke. Cigarettes. You know, like, you know how you get that pack, that fresh pack of Newports? You gotta pack that, that pack of cigarettes down. You gotta do my individually hand-rolled cigarettes. The same way. Cigarettes. If, but this is the only thing I don't understand about warp, warp drive and warp speed and all that shit. The first time you use it, where the fuck are you going? Hmm? I'm going to warp all the way across space to what's your destination? Where are you going to go? Well, first, we're just going to try to warp from Earth to the moon and see if we can do that. What if you warp inside the moon? Then what? No, no, it wouldn't work like that because the moon is a solid construct and we're only bending time, space, not actual physical matter. So we wouldn't be able to, oh, you make sense now. That makes sense. Okay, so after you warp from the earth to the moon, then where are you going to go? Oh, well, you probably warp there to Jupiter. Then we're going to, we're going to warp to Neptune. Then we're going to, we're going to warp to Sirius. To, we're going to warp to the dog star. Alpha Centauri. Going to Orion's belt. I'm going everywhere. Fuck it. Just warp it all over the fucking cosmos. Jason versus everyone. Do you got do you do you think we landed on the moon? That is a tricky one. That's that's a tricky one. That is a tricky one, buddy. I don't know. I'm still I'm uh, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, and Japan, uh, China has a, uh, China has a rover on the moon right now. Did anybody know that? China just put a rover on the moon a little while ago. It wasn't even, you know, major headlines or anything like that. And they're getting pictures and shit back from a part of the moon that supposedly nobody else has been to. China is doing that. You heard about that? I don't give a fuck what your brother-in-law look like. I'm trying to see what your sister look like. Hey. What's up? What's up, sis? How your marriage going? Hmm? Okay. Anthony, I got you, bro.
Yeah, because atoms, everything is made of atoms, and atoms are basically empty space. But matter still does bend uh, space time around it, creating gravity. So that's what I'm saying. Like the warp, the whole warp thing. How would you, how do you do it the first time? You're going to fuck some shit up, man. The first time you try some warp speed shit. I, mean, I can't, how many, how many fucking uh, spacecraft just blew up on a fucking launch pad? Y'all done blew up like four or five of them shit just trying to get out the atmosphere. You're going to try to warp across space. Fuck out of here. You're going to fuck yourself up. Your dick going to get caught in the outlet and everything. You know? Got that fever tree. Ooh, we that ginger beer. It's, yo, it's premium. Not just any old ginger beer. You see it. Premium ginger. Made with natural gingers. And it's in a cute little 6.8 ounce bottle. It's, I don't need a whole 12 ounces. You can hold it like this, put your pinky out, and it's delicious. Ah, ginger beer. You ain't never had ginger beer? Oh, shit. Go to my Instagram page, Paintings by the Prince. Go to my page, scroll down, and look at all the fucking different ginger beers I got you. Here's just a here's just a couple I already got on hand. So let's see. We have the the fever tree, that premium ginger beer. Mm. Then you got some some Barrett's ginger beer. Okay. Then what about that um that Jamaican ginger beer? Then you got that that spicy ginger brew, oh, non-alcoholic beverage by Main Root. That shit is good. And then you got you got your Goya, a Jamaican style a ginger beer. And then you got your. Your reeds, all natural Jamaican style ginger ale. That ginger brew. So yeah, Jamaica is known for that shit, yo. That ginger. Jamaican, Jamaican, Jamaican style. You know. My favorite, my favorite one is Blenheim. Hot. Blenheim's hot ginger ale. That shit is off the fucking chain. But you can't hardly find that shit anywhere. Really exclusive. Ginger wine? Mmm. Really, Raymond? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, most of those shits are hot, yo. I like them spicy like that. Nice and spicy. Time. So it's a time-wasting machine. We're after they defined. 
Inside this vacuum chamber are two small metal plates sitting less than the width of a human hair apart from one another. To get them that close and not to touch, the metal has to be perfectly flat, down almost to the atomic level. The zero point fluctuations of free space won't fit between those plates as well. So when you bring these two plates together, there are fewer fluctuations between the plates than there are outside the plates. The force builds up and it gets, actually gets stronger and stronger as the plates get closer together. And that force we refer to as arising from negative energy. The zero point energy fluctuations outside the plates are stronger than those between. So pressure from the outside pushes them together. Or think of it another way. The negative energy between the plates expands space around it. Steve's years of meticulous labor have made him the first person on Earth to have measured a force produced by negative energy. But the amount he's detected is minuscule. The force is equal to the weight of a red blood cell in the Earth's gravitational field. So it's tiny. But if you add up thousands of these plates like we have in our experiment, you can actually achieve a, a palpable and useful force. Steve's discovery may only be a baby step towards a warp drive, but he's confirmed that Miguel Acubierre's warp drive theory does not violate the laws of physics. The energy needed to warp space and propel a warp drive forward actually exists. So what we're doing here at uh, Houston, we're trying to generate uh, a microscopic instance of what could be classified as uh, a space warp. So just to kind of give a little background, the idea of a space warp works on the principle ex of expanding and contracting space in such a way uh, that allows you to go somewhere very, very quickly. Uh, when you talk about interstellar distances, it's very, very difficult to cross that distance in time periods that are not measured in centuries or millennia. So that's the idea that, uh, or that's the limitation that uh, drives us to think about the idea of a space warp. And, uh, an airport has those, uh, those rolling walkways that you can get onto that helps you cover the distance uh, quicker between gates, right? So as you're walking along and say somebody's next to you walking at a, a similar rate, uh, as you step onto the moving walkway, you'll appear to start moving faster relative to the other person that's not on the walkway. So in principle, that's like a, a terrestrial analogy for the idea of how it might, uh, uh, might appear. So but it's very simplified, but just to try and help articulate the point of view. So in principle, a space warp would allow you to go to places like Alpha Centauri in time periods measured in weeks, uh, months, as opposed to decades or centuries or millennia. Alpha Centauri. So what we're doing in the lab is Ain't very scientific, very controlled. It's uh, right, Ronnie. We're simply trying to generate a very microscopic instance of this type of phenomenon to show that we've uh, properly interpreted the mathematics and uh, done something in a very controlled scientific manner. Uh, so you know, nobody oh, needs yeah. to quit their day jobs. You're not going to bolt this to a spacecraft. This is very much in, in the realm of, of a science pursuit. Uh, but it's the it's the the right next step to take. We have to get kind of existence proof uh, that we. This is is warp drive physically possible? Can we physically warp? to a different star system, to a different constellation, to a different point in space that's too far to conceive traveling conventionally, you know, with rocket thrusters or even, like they said, if you can reach near light speed, if a, you know, a star system is, you know, 40 trillion light years away, you still got to travel you know, it's going to take forever. You can just say like like 30,000 light years away. Then who's going to travel that distance for 30,000 years, even if you're going at the speed of fucking light? Like, it's ridiculous. So they're trying to figure out, is warp drive physically possible? Can we bend space in such a way that we can make two very distant points in time space touch each other? And we can just jump there and then re and then put space time back the way it was and then realize the great distance that we've traversed. <clears throat> the 
but that's the whole that's the whole topic of this little piece right here is properly uh, understood and applied to mathematics you know general relativity has made a lot of interesting predictions uh, over the years so it's uh, this is just one of those things where i think after uh, a good amount of due diligence we'll eventually get there but how long it takes to get the application again if it's two years 20 yeah. years or 200 years i don't know it, it, you know, I think based on the work I've done in the last uh, couple years to reduce the uh, energy requirements to something that's a little bit more tenable, some of the previous uh, energy estimates were very, very large, and most scientists, myself included, were originally skeptical that you could potentially uh, ever manifest uh, uh, this idea, but uh, the work I've done the last couple of years has been really encouraging and gotten myself and a lot of the scientists uh, interested that... Um, Maybe we've moved it from the realm of impractical into plausible, and so that's why you see some of this activity at this activity at this point. Hmm. So, what do you what do you guys think? How long how long how long would you predict it would be before mankind can develop? such a, a technology you know if they're if they're already building off of um quantum physics and string theories and things right now you know what maybe another 50 years before they come up with some 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 stage model 75 years before they test something what a hundred maybe a hundred years before they fucking try to do like some kind of live man mission or, 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 you know, is warp drive still a thousand years away or is it maybe just a couple hundred years away? How far are we from Star Trek right now? You know? Yeah, where we going? <laughs> where the fuck is we going though? What what the guy said, and I said the same shit that Alpha Centauri. He said it too. What if we want to travel to Alpha Centauri? Mother, some people think they know where. All right, so this is see everything is everything, yo. Everything connects. Okay, so how did I know? Now I've never listened to that shit, but how did I know that dude was gonna say Alpha Centauri? <laughs> because. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So listen, you got to think about it. Uh, you ever seen? Um, damn, what's the name of that movie? Prometheus. That was the name of it. Y'all you, you, seen Prometheus? It was supposed to be like the alien prequel, prequel or something. And in the, in the very beginning, like this tall white, one of the tall whites come down and um, like he eats something he takes some kind of capsule and then it fucking like disintegrates his body or this was that it yeah and it disintegrates his body and it like flows into this water and puts his genetic material on this planet and and he him sacrificing himself and dispersing his genetic material was the cause of life on this planet now that theory that life originated elsewhere and was bought brought to earth whether purposely or accidentally is called genetic panspermia if I'm thinking right, genetic panspermia, I think that's it. So, <laughs> through a stick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Here, evolve <laughs> science. <laughs> but, um, I I actually live in an area where it's it's pretty decent shopping, dude. Uh, so in just like this one shopping area, there's a a Michaels, a Hobby Lobby, and an AC Morris. And then if if I drive an hour, I can get to a um a Dick Blick art store, art supply store. Um, but I mean I just I shop locally for mostly everything. 
And the hardest thing for me to get at one time was uh, my gambling colors when I decided to switch over to gambling. Let me finish one point. Uh, okay, where are we going? Um, Alpha Centauri, genetic panspermia. Because people, some people think that they know where so the people who uh, subscribe to the panspermia theory believe they know where the gods came from, where the Anunnaki came from, and it's it's Alpha Centauri. And so some people want to go there, and uh, or some theories are Sirius B. And I, so, Sirius B, I think, that's another destination that may, and the Mayans had a, had a star chart. <laughs> Lazy gamer Texas up in this thing, you know what I'm saying? It's, everything's big in Texas, you know what I'm saying? But I only heard steers and queers come from there. Which one are you? Nah. My bag, bro. This came from a movie. <laughs> what movie was that? Full Metal Jacket. But anyway. <clears throat> Alright, got that point out the way. Yeah, so now. Brushes. You order drawers offline. Dude, like, like I say, I, I normally go to AC Moors. I swear to God, dude. Like, my local AC Moors is so well stocked. So well organized. And I, I live in a college community. So it seems like they have a lot of sales on stuff all the time for like the college kids. And just recently, <clears throat> uh, the last photo I posted when I got my, I probably brought like, uh, like 12 canvases at one time, yo, big ones. I brought like the whole series all the way up, all sizes, yo. They had a 70% a off sale for like four days, 70% off. All canvases, seventy percent off. You know, it's like, thank God, y'all spent like a hundred and fifty bucks on five hundred dollars worth of shit, yo. <laughs> yo, so I try to do that shit, and they all and the same thing with their brushes, yo. These um, these Princeton selects. Yo, if, if if I catch if I catch AC Moore's on a sale, forty percent off, fifty percent off. You know what I'm saying? Or you get those coupons, forty percent off your entire purchase or some shit like that. Man, I go like, go get like four or five brushes, use one of those coupons. Got the shit. Got the app. Go to go to the AC Moore app. Coupons. Oh man, I'll be killing it. I'll be I'm fugal with my damn my supplies but the canvases i get are really good these are these are some really good durable canvases and like i say i just stockpile when they're on sale because those 30 those 36 by 48s right there man those are 70 dollar canvases 70 80 bucks you see how many i got you know what i'm saying <clears throat> I'll just buy that shit when they don't sell. Get wait to that you get that fifty percent sale or sixty percent sale. That seventy percent sale. I think that was like some back to school shit. Cause I ain't never seen that shit like that before. Seventy percent off. Why well, I like to flip my damn wig up in that goddamn stove. Baby! Meet me in the front. <laughs> I'm about to start dragging all these canvases up there. Motherfuckers in the front looking at me stupid like shit. It's on sale, bitch. I'm about to <laughs> shit. <laughs> and yes, I'm a rewards member too. Give me my damn points for that shit. I'm about to rack up, bitch. But so now, oh, what I was gonna say too. Yeah, so I had to I had to drive like an hour to a, another town, Allentown, Allentown. Sir, what do you want to name your town? Uh, Mr. Allen, uh, you know what? I think I'll name it Allentown. <laughs> but anyway, had to drive an hour to Allentown 
to go to the Dick Blick store to get gambling paints because once again, I have three art supply stores in town. AC Moore's, Hobby Lobby, and um, what's the other one? Michael's. And it's like, none of y'all carry gambling? Like, what the fuck is up with that? Nobody carries gambling. Really. Seriously. Nobody. Okay. And so, I don't know what it was, but for some reason, me and my girl, where we were, sh we were shopping somewhere over there for something and it wasn't it wasn't ac more where i normally go i think we went to michael's and went up in michael's and um just looking to see if they had canvases on sale or whatnot and on a paint aisle i seen motherfucking gambling i was like yo when the hell y'all started carrying this shit Oh, we just started. We just started getting supplies of that in a little while ago. Word, if I ain't gotta drive a fucking hour to go get gambling paints now. Thank fucking God, yo. So now I ain't gotta go. I ain't gotta order shit offline. I like. I like buying my shit locally. I like to go pick my stuff up. It's a immediate gratification. And then I don't know. It's like I don't want. I, I used to be like one of those shopping junkies. And some people do get like a little high from spending money sometimes. It's like, ah, oh, I'm balling. It's like, <laughs> but it's like, it's weird because it's like, ah, oh, I'm balling on art supplies, bitch. Like, I just like spending money on art supplies. Like, yeah, I'm buying gambling. You see that shit, right? Just makes me feel good. I'm sorry. That's my ego. Gideon. Oh, yeah, all these paints everywhere here, man. But then, oh, let me tell you, too. <clears throat> I tried, so I tried a, a couple different paints. And this one right here is really, really expensive. But it's good. Like, this little tube of paint was, like, 27 bucks. But it's, it's Old Holland. And they have a reputation. That they are the finest quality paints that a man could ever paint for. But this shit is no joke, man. Their pigments, their texture, oh my god. Old Holland is the shit. I only had this one too because it costs so much. And I do a mostly black art. So just looking at the package, it looks like I could use this for a really good skin tone. And it's Bernie Ochre. I was like, all right, you're supposed to be the shit, Mr. Old Holland. I'm going to buy one two can i get one tube of that please how much 27 dollars yeah just let me let me get one yeah just no that that one yeah that one because it was behind a locked case so you can't even like touch it you got excuse me miss <clears throat> ma'am excuse me. look hey yo bitch yo yeah he opened his case yes i want to i want to buy some oh excuse me sir that's old holland i know i want some can I get some old Holland? Hmm. And she thinks to herself, probably can't afford that. And I'm thinking to myself, I really can't afford this. <laughs> ah, fuck it. Let me get that one. <laughs> so I had this one tube of old Holland. And it's, it's nice. I love this shit. I use it so sparingly. I have a little bit of it right there. Just, I'll be just like, ah, sucker. <laughs> And then, yo, I woke up this morning, and guess what I saw? The paint fairy had came and got me two tubes of old Holland paint. Now I have some ultramarine blue and some Mars brown. Yo, yo, I love my girl to death, yo, swear to God, yo. That's crazy, yo. It's like $50 worth of paint right here. <laughs> Word up. That's like $50 worth of fucking paint. That's that's some shit, ain't it? And then y'all wonder why I charge so much on my damn paintings, man. That shit, that shit is not cheap, son. I be going broke trying to buy this shit. But the colors, you can't deny it. You know what I'm saying? The better paint you use, you cannot deny 
the finished product. Simple as that. It's simple and plain, yo. But you get you get what you pay for, and you know what I'm saying. We can still look at the Italian Renaissance, 500 fucking years ago. 500 years ago, Leonardo was doing his shit. You know what I'm saying? With the brush and all that. And we can still see his shit. We can go look at it right now. 500 years later. Because he used high quality oils and high quality pigments. And that shit lasts. Yeah, it's a little cracky a little bit. You know, got to touch it up a little bit here and there. 500 years. You know what I'm saying? Goddamn. That seems pretty good to me. The higher quality your paints are, the more durable they are going to be, the more intense the pigments are going to be, and the longer it's going to last. So hopefully, 500 years from now, somebody will look at my shit and be like, Travis Prince did a really good job on that paint. I like that. Let's put that in the museum, you know? I paint to live, you know, it keeps me alive. Do I, do I paint for a living? No, I wish I did. I work in a factory for a living, but painting keeps me alive. It keeps me sane. It keeps me healthy. You feel me? You know, you, you, you understand that man? I don't know. I'm not trying to get too philosophical over here, but that's how I feel about my art, yo. Like, if I can't do this shit, I feel awkward. If I go a couple days without painting, subconsciously it starts nagging at me like I'm missing something. I forgot to do something. What is it? Something's out of place. And it's like, oh, I didn't paint yesterday. I think I need to go paint something before I lose my flipping marbles. What? That old Holland. Damn, my hand is so shaky. I couldn't get that fucking picture just now. Y'all seen how long it took me to take that shit? I'm like, focus, bitch. Focus. Focus. Oh, my bad. Let me. Um, yo, Peru, what up, man? Let's see. Let me do some Instagram shit real quick, Dice. Since I, I almost forgot about my old Holland paint. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Giddy said, fuck that. The Egyptian shit is 5,000 years old. That's true indeed. Why? High quality pigments. They painting over them shits, though. They been doing that shit for about 10 years. That shit ain't gonna look the same no more in a little while, man. And then, in the next 5,000 years, they gonna be like, yeah, the Egyptians were white. <laughs> what? All right, bro. Millions.
Oh shit. Alright, gotta put some music on in a minute. Hold up guys. Let me tag this thing. Uh, yeah, here and there. Um, I always tell people, uh, if you want, you can get a piece of my art for cheap, man. Honestly, if you want a commission, I can do a commission for you cheaper than you can probably buy one of my paintings. Uh, and there's a reason behind that. So, <clears throat> if you give me a picture to paint, I can take the picture and I can get started painting. You know, I don't have to think about shit. But for my own art, I have to think about shit. And so, in actuality, when you when you buy a piece of art from an artist, you're not just buying the colors or the paint or the brush strokes. In turn, you are buying that. You are buying the work itself and everything physical about it. But it's the concept, the idea. Who thought of this shit? How, how did his mind work? To conceptualize this image and then to actually visualize this image in a way that it made a connection with you. That's what you're buying. You're buying the concept. You're buying the idea. You're buying the, the emotional or nostalgic attachment to the piece. Which is displayed, you know, through the physical labors of the artist with the colors and the paints, techniques and brush strokes and all of that. And that's all combined. But, you know, when when people really fall in love with a piece of art, it's it's more it's it's a way deeper connection than just the physical part of it, you know, because the image is what strikes you and that and that the image connects to your mentality and your consciousness. And so I feel like my own concepts, my own ideas that I've been able to visualize are worth value to me. <laughs> they have they they have a lot of value to me. And that's and so for me to conceptualize, visualize and depict a certain image and then have to pay a model, find a location, go here, set up a photo shoot and actually photograph, edit, and print these photographs. So there's a lot more that goes into a piece of art that I create for myself, as opposed to a commission where somebody says, here, paint this picture of me and my dog. Okay, cool, I'm gonna paint a picture of you and your dog. Give me $700. But when you say, oh, I, I really like that piece from your reader series, can I get that? Yeah, give me $5,000. Well, you only charged me 700 for the dog and paint. Yeah, but that wasn't my shit, though. It's, that's my, that's my idea. Give me $5,000 for that shit. So. It doesn't matter. I can ship globally. I've shipped pieces to Japan. I have a piece in Belgium. I have a piece in Holland. I have a piece in Amsterdam. I have a piece in Alaska. Uh, a friend of mine is getting together some photographs for me to do a portrait for her. She lives in Hawaii. Um, I've shipped all over the the continental US. So I've I have international pieces. And so if you're in Israel or Istanbul or 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? Tanzania, as long as you can get mail, do you do you receive bills? I know you got to pay your light bill, your water bill. If you can get mail at your address, then I can send you a painting. <laughs> Ron, what up, yo? Brenton said he in Alaska. That's what I'm saying. I can send I can send paintings to wherever you at. Can you get mail? Okay then. I can send it to you. <laughs> you get you get packages from other people, right? <laughs> I'm saying. Shit. I live in Israel. You get you pay bills, don't it? Okay. And that bill come to your house. <laughs> don't nobody get away from that shit. <clears throat> Alright guys. Let me, let me paint let me paint a little bit more. What's up everybody? Uh got a lot of people in here, man. Getting kinda nervous. Got got a lot of strangers watching me right now. This ain't my normal hardcore group of viewers. But uh appreciate everybody stepping in, checking me out, yo. Uh, peeping the art if this is your first time in the stream definitely subscribe to the channel art and education we don't fuck around with um sports and entertainment over here you know what i'm saying that's the that's the norm i let everybody else do sports and entertainment we do art and education so uh thanks for checking out the stream like i said if this is your first time please subscribe to the channel hit the notification button because i'm in here all the time uh and you can check out more dope art from your boy. Painted by the Prince. Peep the name. Got tons of new stuff coming up. I just started one painting. I'll show you guys that real quick. Germany. What's good? Yo, I, I started this other painting yesterday. It is so dope, yo. You gotta check this one out. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get some the first layer of paint on here. But I got I got the first layer of paint on this one. Come here. This belt fucking sucks, yo. Like if I it's this kind of belt. Let me see. This little weird man, that shit will not grip for shit, yo. Like every time I sit down, it loosens itself up. Like this is a poor design for a belt. Don't buy these kind of belts. But it's weird too. You you notice that like Nowadays, when you buy pants, like, they come with these little cloth belts. I guess, like, companies realize that throughout the process of making the pants themselves, they waste a lot of material. They just said, hey, let's just take the rest of that shit and make a, make a belt out of it. But it's weird, like, almost every pair of pants I've, I've bought in the last couple of years, like, comes with a belt in it now. That shit wasn't like that when I was a kid. Like, pants didn't come with... Didn't come with belts in that shit. <sighs> yeah, but ain't that dope, right? This shit right here gonna be fresh, son. Oh yeah, I can I can paint cars and all that shit, man. Anything. That shit is fresh, right? I know. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, this right here. I can I can't wait to put this shit right here in the gallery and have that shit hanging on the wall. Bruh. Bruh, that shit gonna be too right. These animals killed mom. This piece has a bunch of red flags. Something's not right. 
It was looking kind of funky, but in actuality, it was just the way I toned the canvas. Uh, just like like this canvas is started out white and I toned it. I just happened to tone that canvas purple because the colors I was going to use on it. And um, so while I was toning it and putting that wash over it, I flipped the canvas upside down to do a different part. And the wash actually just like pull down the canvas a little bit completely unintentional so when I flipped it back around I was like ah that does look kind of cool but it wasn't I, I, I didn't ever intend on keeping it like that yeah yeah I, I trust me when I saw it I was like that that's kind of that's kind of pleasing you know to the eye and I, I thought about playing with it a certain kind of way maybe even because I tone it with acrylic paint, so I was thinking like maybe if I just do the background in acrylic and do the the portrait portion in oils, and then I'll be able to play with that that runny kind of drippy style a little bit. And I was like, nah, let me just go ahead and do my little regular shit, yo. I be getting nervous to step outside that box sometimes, man. But like I said, I, I am trying to like get a stamp on my style. So that when people see it, they can recognize it as mine without, you know, even having to see my name. And so they can just look at a piece because there's several artists that I really, really, really admire. And I can see their art and look at it and like, I know who that is. And I don't have to see their name. I just know their style of painting, you know. And so I want to get my style so down packed and fine tuned that... When people see it, they'll say, oh, that's, that's you, Travis painted that shit. Like, how you know? I, I can just tell, look at it. It's, look, it looks just like his shit, yo. So, I am getting hungry, dudes. I gotta, it's noon time right now. Matter of fact, let me call my homie real quick, maybe. I asked him, well, I don't know. I'm going to try to go for another 30 minutes. I do want to try to get her her torso filled in. And this should be a really quick painting as well. <clears throat> uh, do you use web page? I use social media a lot. I do have a website, uh, www.travisprints.blogspot.com. I ain't gonna lie, man. I haven't updated my website in like over a year. So it's not gonna have all of my most current pieces of art up there. I actually do need to get in there and like just update it a little bit. But it takes so long to try to d reformat files for pictures and stuff like that. Whereas social media, everything is linked to your phone and to the, to the photo catalog on your phone. And so I can just like put pictures on Instagram and Facebook instantly, you know, without all the extra stuff. So if you want to check out m my most current uh, projects and pieces that I recently completed, it'll be easier just to follow me on social media at Paintings by the Prince. That's all my social media sites, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, DeviantArt, Tumblr, all of that shit is Paintings by the Prince. So you can definitely contact me up there, send me messages, check out my art catalog, uh, request prints or commissions or anything like that. 
or you can or you can email me at um, Travis Prince 81 at yahoo.com that's an easy way to get in contact with me too all right plan two I want to get this thing done, but only thing I keep thinking about is hunger. Yeah, to all my viewers, cause we never been suckers, we never been losers. I smoke hell a lot, but never drug abuser. Where's my shit? What the, what in the Sam hell is going on? Tienes hambre? Adios, amigos. Make something out of that, yo. To all the viewers, I give a shout out to all the viewers. Cause we never been a loser. play right now is uh all right the game i'm playing the most is ghost recon wildlands because the pvp is on there um i still play battlefield 4 battlefield 1 and i, I still play fallout 4 from time to time those are probably the only games like if i really want a game the only games i even think about playing i got fucking stacks of games i got so much shit, yo. And VR headsets and all that shit, but I got two PS Pros. But, uh, I don't know. I don't really game as much as I used to. But I don't, I don't play any kind of, like, sports games at all. Like, wrestling is a sport, a fighting sport. Like, wrestling or UFC or any of that shit. I don't play those games. No sports games, no FIFA or basketball or none of that shit. I just rather play like shooter games, yo. Or like some solo shit like like Skyrim or once again like Fallout 4. Just play that shit, hop in there by myself and and zone out in the world of fucking Fallout. Uh -huh. Level up my power armor, find me some good ass weapons, go kill me some death claws and some raiders and shit. You know what I'm saying? Collect me some caps and go buy me some stem packs. And destroy the children of Atama.
old Holland paint. Mmm. 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 I love it, old Holland. I love what you do for me. is help our patients but what they don't teach us in medical school is there are so many ways to do harm did you hit an artery on an appendectomy
Fuck you, don't talk to me like that, boss. Boss. Speaker's gonna tell me <laughs> batteries, batteries low. Please charge now. When I plug you in, motherfucker, you should say thank you. How about that shit? You ever thought about that? I know one place where women were safe, so we googled sexual harassment Antarctica and we found that. Fuck this. Place, huh? Stuart, what's with the dress? Oh, I'm hiding from customers in my bank who are angry about all the fees that we charge. Transfer fees, paper statement fees. Well, at Huntington, we don't nickel and dime our customers with gotcha fees. It doesn't seem right. You guys are so yes, weird. We aren't those other banks. We're Huntington. Welcome. No, no. Oh my God, I'm home.
Jesus.
monster has fucking gotten to me. I've been trying to hold out. I've been screaming hungry for like an hour. And I can't I can't take it anymore. I'm losing focus. I can't concentrate. Holy shit, man. I feel faint and lightheaded. I, I, I kept saying I'm going to go cook something. I'm going to go cook something. Screw that. I was going to go cook something. But I think I might go to Panchero's. And get me a burrito. And call it a day. And then I got to go get my car inspected. Uh, later this afternoon too. I got a good bit done on this piece though. I got mostly all her torso done. I'll come back next time and start. Well, finish the skin tones. Her, uh, the rest of this hand and these fingers, her breast, and then after I get the skin tones done, I'll come in and work with that her head wrap. <laughs> it's looking good. It's coming along nice. Appreciate everybody for, um, oh crap, oh crap, get out the way, easel, I'm too big. I uh, appreciate everybody coming here to check me out, yo. If this is your first time in the stream, definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. I'm in here all the time. But, um, let me get some of this shit to know. Yeah, dudes, I'm bringing this stream to an end because... I have to go get some kind of nourishment before I pass the hell out. All right, where's that controller? All right, guys, I'm going to see you next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.